Hello and welcome to this AutoCAD 2017 tutorial. Uh, in this video we're going to be looking at grid settings uh, and grid snaps. Uh, we're going to be looking at changing line weights and we're going to be looking at changing drawing limits. So let's make a start. Uh, if we open a new drawing, so we'll select templates, ACAD ISO named plot styles. Now uh, a word on limits first of all. Uh, when you come over here to the zoom uh, portion we've got a number of zoom options if you select that little uh, down arrow there you can see here we've got several different zoom options and uh, we'll cover what all of these mean in, an, in another video but for the time being if you select zoom all even though you've got nothing on the drawing at all nothing in model space at all it zooms into this area now the reason it zooms into this specific area is that this is showing you uh, the limits of the drawing size that you've got set out. Now it's possible to change these limits and this can be quite useful when you're producing uh, drawings that need to fit on a certain space. Uh, you can uh, tell AutoCAD what you want the limits of the drawing to be. You can still draw outside of this area uh, but it gives you an idea of the space that you're working in. So if you type in uh, lim into the command line and it brings up your options here, limits, so limb space, uh, and it asks you to specify the coordinates for uh, your limits. So we're happy with the uh, lower left corner here being 0, 0, that makes sense. So we'll just leave that as uh, 0, 0, so if we hit enter or space for that. Now at the minute, the upper right corner is set to 420, 297. Uh, and if I move my cursor up here and you keep an eye on the coordinate bar down here uh, you can see that when this gets to the top it, it's hitting 297 just over uh, and 420 is just over here. Now the reason that that's in there is that 420 by 297 is uh, A3 uh, size of paper. So what we'll do is we'll change our limits for this drawing uh, to a so uh, for A4 we want the width of our paper in landscape to be 297 mil, and we want our uh, Y value, uh, the uh, edge of it to be 210 uh, which is the uh, size of A4 paper in landscape so if we hit space or enter uh, then we've changed the limits of the drawing. Now you'll notice that nothing's changed on the screen, nothing's different here at all. But if we go over here to zoom all again and select zoom all again, so it's changed uh, the button that's shown. It keeps it as zoom all now, so you don't need to click the down arrow. If we just select that, you see we've zoomed in again. And now when I move my mouse up here, you can see that the Y value is 210 uh, and uh, 297 uh, is around about there. So that's kind of our A4 uh, working space, if you like. So that's how you change the limits uh, of a drawing. Uh, if now we want to uh, do a quick drawing, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at how we can use the grid. Now, at the moment, you can see that the grid is displayed in the background. Uh, and down here, we've got in blue display drawing grid. So you can actually turn the grid off if you like. If you don't like it being there, you can turn it off and just work in a blank space uh, but you tend to get used to, to having it there and it can be helpful uh, just to give you a reference when you're uh, drawing uh, items to figure out where stuff ends. But what we're going to look at is how we can actually use this function, the grid snap. Uh, but first of all uh, what we're going to do is going to change some of the settings. So if we click this down arrow then it brings up these options. So at the minute we're in grid snap. You can also uh, change it to polar snap if you like. Uh, but we'll keep it in grid snap for now. And if we go to snap settings, you can change uh, a couple of things here. So here we've got the snap spacing. So this will be where we uh, our cursor snaps to. At the minute, it's set to 10 millimeters by 10 millimeters. Now, just for the sake of this uh, video, we're going to change that to 20 uh, and 20. And you'll notice that that automatically changes because we've got this box checked, equal X and Y spacing. It'll automatically change that. If I change that to 50, uh, and move my cursor down to here it changes that to 50 automatically but we'll leave this on 20 for now because uh, that's absolutely fine and then if we went back out of here now we'd see that the actual grid hadn't changed at all but what would happen is that my uh, cursor would be restricted to certain positions 
So now what we're going to do is change the grid spacing itself. So I don't want it to be 10 by 10 anymore. I want that to be 20 uh, by 20. And then this shows a major line every fifth uh, line will be a major line. And again, you can see that in the background here. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then a major line. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and a major line. So it just, uh, again, it gives you a little bit of uh, reference points for your eyes to focus on uh, when you're drawing. So if we click that OK now, when we go back out, you'll notice my mouse is free to move around however I want, but the second I start trying to draw something, so if I want to draw a line, you'll see that my mouse is now restricted to certain uh, positions, and it's the corners of this grid that's now set to 20 by 20. You may have noticed that the grids have got bigger because we've increased their size. Uh, and also what's happened is that uh, because I now want to draw something, my cursor can only snap to those grid uh, positions there. So this can be quite helpful uh, for certain drawings. It's not used uh, extensively in my personal experience, uh, but it can be quite useful. So let's just have a look uh, at what this could be used for. So uh, if you want to produce uh, a drawing of, say, uh, a rack of a rack and pinion system, uh, let's say we want to produce this with a polyline. Uh, so let's start here and if we go along by one and then up by three and across like this can you see how it's just snapping to every uh, grid position I can't put one in the middle of here it can only go on the edges like that so there's one uh, tooth thumb and I could just continue now uh, and if you do have a drawing that where everything does sit on a, uh, a grid like this then obviously this can be really useful uh, and, and quite a good uh, time saver as well. Uh, but as I say, in my personal experience, I just haven't uh, used this very much uh, at all. So there we've got uh, a bit of a uh, rack of a rack and pinion system. Uh, the other thing that we want to just have a look at on this video uh, is how we change line weight. Uh, so there's a couple of things we can do. The first thing that we, we need to recognize is that if we want to change the weight of a line, we can do that in, again in a couple of different ways. Let's say for some reason I want to add a line here to indicate something, uh, and a line over here to indicate something like that. At the moment, these lines and these lines appear to be the same thickness. Now, if I want to change the thickness of this line, so if I want to take this line and make it thinner than this line, uh, then there's a couple of ways of doing that. If I select that and then type PR into the command line and that brings up the properties option, hit space, it brings up this uh, panel here uh, which has uh, all the information about that line in it. So it tells you exactly where it is, uh, how long it is, how much it changes by uh, and lots of useful information. And what it also does is tells you here the line weight. So the line weight here uh, at the minute the line weight is selected by layer. Now we're going to cover layers in a later video but what this means is that if this line is drawn onto a certain layer or moved onto a certain layer it will take on the attributes of the line uh, that is preset in that layer and again we'll, we'll cover that again in a bit more detail in a future video but we can set this to be whatever we want so we could set this to be say uh, 0.13 uh, say something like that uh, and let's do the same to that one. Let's make that one 0.13. Uh, so we'll change that to 0.13 like that. Now what you'll notice is that it doesn't actually seem to have changed the thickness of the line. Even if you zoom in on it, it's still the same thickness as this line over here. And that's because down here on our status bar, we've got down here the show hide line weight option. Uh, if this doesn't appear on your status bar, go to the customize button uh, and select it uh, from here so there's the line weight option so if I deselect that it disappears if I select it it comes back again so if I turn this on then what you'll then see is that this line appears to have got thicker when you compare it to this line so that's what we're looking at now obviously it depends on the resolution of your screen and all sorts of things how this will look the idea is that when you print this uh, this line will have a definite thickness and this line will have a definite thickness. Uh, this is the default setting uh, for layer 0 which I believe is uh, 0.25mm uh, and we've now set that to 0.13mm which sounds 0.25 sounds really really thin but actually when it's produced uh, on a drawing it, it can look 
uh, it can look quite thick it just depends on uh, how you have your settings uh, set up uh, and what other lines you have in place so that's how we change the line weight of something that's one way uh, of doing it uh, what we'll be looking at in a future video is how to set up different layers and assign uh, different thicknesses of line within those layers so that we can uh, we don't have to keep on changing the line weight manually if we draw a line on a certain layer it will be automatically be a certain thickness uh, but as I say more on that in a later video so in this video uh, we've covered uh, the limits of a drawing uh, we've looked at uh, adjusting the grid and the grid snap uh, and we've looked at changing the line weight of uh, lines so I hope this video was useful to you uh, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video Take care. Bye.